Hey everyone, Lisa Salvatore here with the weekly energy and astrology report for Sunday, January 30th through Saturday, February 5th. The theme for the week is be kind to yourself and take breaks where necessary. There is a lot going on. Uh, Mercury is still retrograde and about to station direct. So Mercury is moving really, really slowly, almost basically at a standstill. And so when Mercury is like this, we can absolutely expect ourselves to feel muddled and slowed down and you know reined in almost like we can't we can't get things out properly or get things moving properly or things are being miscommunicated and misunderstood all of that is likely to be very pronounced this week so again take really good care of yourselves and be kind and take breaks where you need to venus has also stationed direct as of yesterday january 29th early in the morning so it is likely that you you could be feeling quite emotional you could be feeling like you know there's this push to want to solve any type of problems that you've had in your relationships and including relationships to, to self. Also with your finances, this could also have brought dredged up some stuff for you while Venus was retrograde. Again, I have that video linked in my profile if you'd like to go back and listen to that just to kind of see what this might have, in, you know, what has this entailed for you and how does it correlate with the video. So today, Sunday, January 30th, we start this week off with the Sun in Aquarius squaring off with Uranus in Taurus. And this can definitely have us feeling charged and energized. And also a lot of insight can be coming in. A lot of downloads, a lot of things that we've been wanting information on and may have felt hard to get or hard to come by. This could all be coming in and coming in quite quickly at that. The energy of Sun square Uranus is that of like a higher frequency, both in the body and of the mind. Also, the moon in Capricorn is sextiling Neptune in Pisces, which can be really nice. They're talking to each other nicely. This is great for getting answers, trusting our intuition with Uranus squaring the sun and the moon sextiling Neptune. And then also as we move on towards the end of the day and into the evening, we've got that moon getting in alignment with both Mercury and Pluto. So again, I want to emphasize what I talked about last week, which was information coming through in the dream space still want to suggest that you ask your higher self for guidance before you go to sleep and I am sure you will get some sort of clue as to what you're asking about in your dream space. Again, Mercury the messenger is slowing down really, really slow and about to station so we know when this happens the power is heightened and Mercury the messenger travels through all levels of our consciousness to deliver insight in whichever way he needs to, to give us the clues we need to help push us forward. So pay very close attention to the dream space, especially tonight again, and as we go on throughout the week. All week long, we're under the influence of Mars and Jupiter uh, by sextile. So this is a nice, helpful transit. Mars is in Capricorn, Jupiter is in Pisces. So again, you know, Mars in Capricorn likes to act and has a lot of power here and can get things done. And Jupiter in Pisces is very benevolent and, you know, spiritually inclined and positively inclined to do the right thing and to do good. So again, this is the energy that's permeating this week. So that's very positive. Now you may feel a lot more physically exhausted this week. You may have been feeling it, especially towards the end of last week, Thursday, Friday, yesterday, Saturday, today, Sunday, and then likely you felt a charge today because of the sun squaring Uranus. Now again, these come in spurts, These ener this energetic, the energetic shifting, it comes in spurts. So you may find that you're sleeping for three days straight, really long hours, and then just being exhausted throughout the day, or you're wired and not really sleeping at all. Insomnia could also be occurring. So it goes back and forth, it vacillates. This is just the energy right now. So do what you need to do to take care of your body and honor its needs at this time. Now, early Monday morning, January 31st, the moon will enter the sign of Aquarius, and then the moon will square Uranus in Taurus. And so again, this is this feeling of, you know, insight and information coming in, but also frustration and potential blockages or just feeling like you can't get moving, whether it be emotionally, physically, spiritually, all three. So while today we may start off with a lot of gusto, tomorrow we may start to slow down a little bit. And then in the wee early hours of Tuesday morning, February 1st, January 31st, depending on where you are in the world, we're going to have our new moon in Aquarius. This new moon will take place 1246 AM Eastern time. I have a separate reading and video for that um, in my profile, but this new moon in Aquarius, it's at 12 degrees and 23 minutes, I believe of Aquarius. Nope, it's actually 12 degrees and 19 minutes of Aquarius. And this new moon is conjunct Saturn. So Saturn is supporting this new moon. So this is helping us to take 
action, take initiative, get things going, get things moving, get our projects re restarted if they've been stagnant for a bit, which they likely have because of Venus and Mercury being retrograde and messing with all of us, messing with our minds and messing with our hearts. We're sorting it out. We're getting it straight. This is good. <laughs> the steam, we're, it's lifting. Things are lifting a bit. The momentum is picking up in a positive way. Asteroid Juno will also be entering Aquarius on the same day of the first. Um, Juno is the marriage partner in astrology, not technically that literal, but again, it does represent, it's one of the places that represents the marriage partner, the characteristics of the marriage partner or of a partner, a specific partner. And in Aquarius, with all this Aquarian energy, it's about daring to be different and doing things a different way. So when the old ways are no longer serving us, this is when we want to enlist in all of this Aquarian energy and think outside of the box. This new moon Saturn is also conjunct Diana, asteroid Diana, which is all about our independence. This is all about marching to our own beat and doing our own thing and being confident and comfortable with that and not being scared to do things differently than everybody else within reason, of course. This new moon is very supportive for all of that, for new. And then on Wednesday the 2nd, the moon will enter the sign of Pisces early in the morning, about 6 a.m., and will be very close to Jupiter, also in Pisces. And Jupiter is sextiling Mars, and so this definitely brings in a sensitive, compassionate, empathetic, creative, spiritual element to the energy. This would be a great time to communicate through your creative expression because remember, Mercury is going to station direct on the third. So we're still in the throes of this, you know, miscommunication and potential misfires. So it would be wise to take to the creative communication, writing, poetry, anything that helps you to express yourself that won't get you into trouble and that encourages sweetness, that sweet, um, compassionate side of Pisces energy. The moon here just makes us overall more tender-hearted and willing to see things from all different angles. And again, coming off this new moon energy, it just feels like a, a more positive vibe, really, it does. Now at this point, Mercury's like literally at a standstill, about to pivot, about to station direct. So as we move towards the end of the week, particularly Thursday from February 3rd through the 5th, the momentum builds, it picks up speed, there's a lot going on. Mercury will station direct on February 3rd, thankfully, at 24 degrees, 23 minutes of Capricorn. That moon in Pisces will be sextiling Venus in Capricorn, which is really sweet. The moon is also lining up nicely, or supportively, I should say, with Uranus in Taurus. The moon is conjunct Neptune in Pisces. So all in all, even though Mercury is stationing direct, there's, because of all the Pisces energy that's permeating this time, it definitely does feel more calm, more relaxing, and more soothing. So this would be the day you want to take your bubble bath. <laughs> this would be the day you want to chill out, zone out, zen out to some really nice relaxing music, be a little lazy. You may honestly not be able to avoid being a little lazy with this energy. You may find yourself wanting to crawl out of your shell a little bit more than you have been feeling these past couple of weeks. And then we get to Friday, February 4th. And that moon in Pisces is going to line up with Mercury and Pluto in a supportive aspect. But again, this can feel very emotional and can bring in some emotional reveals. Now, further compounding this is the fact that Venus has just stationed direct and so has Mercury. So when the planets station direct, it's almost like, you know, the answers come in and quite quickly at that sometimes. So stay open and stay present. And again, watch the dream space. Now, later on on the 4th, as we move into the 5th, the moon will enter fiery, powerful, and impulsive Aries. And this is like the GSD energy, get stuff done. We get off the ground running as we start get to start the weekend off. And we may even be feeling quite edgy at this point. We're also being supported by the sun and Saturn. Again, structure, order, getting things done, getting things accomplished. And then as we move into the weekend, just be mindful that there is going to be a hasty energy present, feisty energy as that moon in Aries lines up with Mars in Capricorn by a frictional aspect, aspect, they're squaring. So there could be some potential for hurt feelings, hurt words, wounded psyches, you know, wounded, bruised egos here, all of that. So just be mindful of this because yes, Mercury is now direct, but Remember, because Mercury is now direct, you may feel, okay, now I can say whatever I want to say, and now I can do whatever I want to do, and because of the energy, it could just come off a lot more impulsive and more hasty than you intended for it to. So just a little bit more mindfulness as we get to next weekend, because it's going to definitely feel extra charged up. 
Great time for physical exercise, absolutely. Your body will definitely be feeling like it needs to burn up, burn, you know, get more energy out. Um, speaking of exercise, just be careful because, you know, all that energy, you can hurt yourself. <laughs> That's the only thing. And smash yourself in the nose with a kettlebell like I did last week. I'm very lucky that I did not break my nose, honestly. Felt like I did. All right, so let's get a card for the week ahead. I'll tell you, this Mercury retrograde has really been messing with my communication. I'm finding like hard, it's very hard to get words out. <laughs> Can't wait for this one to be past us, I have to say. You know, I always say Mercury retrograde is not that big a deal. I usually don't find it to be too disruptive. And literally the last week, I've had quite a few disruptions that were very frustrating. It's all good though, right? To be expected. Got the five of swords for this week ahead. So again, you know, with all the air energy, not surprised with the swords because the swords are the suit, the uh, element of air, Aquarius. We've got a lot of thinking going on. We've got a lot of mental sparring. We've got a lot of feisty communications that are coming up this week. But again, with that comes a lot of reveal and a lot of information coming through and a lot of ability to move past obstacles that have been holding you back. Take really good care of yourselves and I will be back next week with the weekly. The reading and info on the new moon is in my profile and also the Venus retrograde. Take care, bye.